Hi, my name is David Duber. I'm going to be talking to you about the bifactor indices calculator that I've created and show you some neat things that you can do on it. To start with, it's available at the link on the bottom of the video. And secondly, if you do use this in writing a paper, I ask that you cite it. A reference is available on the first page of the uh, calculator on the introduction tab, which also includes some directions and important notes. Now this calculator is for computing various bifactor indices. A bifactor model is a CFA model in which there's a general factor and multiple specific factors. I've input the loadings of a bifactor model into the input tab. And I've also in this tab put down the unidimensional factor loadings, which means that I ran the same data through a unidimensional model to see what those loadings would be. Later on, we'll compare those loadings to the general factor loadings. But in any case, my bifactor model has loadings for a general factor and two specific factors. These are standardized factor loadings. And so the residual variances are all computed uh, by the calculator. If you have uh, unstandardized uh, model, if you want to analyze your unstandardized coefficients, then you'll want to uh, manually compute and enter in the residual variances as well. Once you have all of your factor loadings, you can look at the different indices. Some of them are available in the factor level, which has ECV, omega, and omega H, as well as Hancock's H and factor determinacy. Now, ECV for a general factor is fairly straightforward, but there are different ways to consider it for specific factors, and this calculator considers two different ways to do that. ECV S and E is uh, as defined in Stuckey and Edelin's 2015 chapter, in which it is the amount of explained variance in the specific factor divided by all explained variance, whereas ECV nu is defined as the ratio of explained variance in the specific factor to all explained variance of the items belonging to that specific factor. So it's not being compared to all items in the model, but only the items in that factor. And everything else is described over here on the right-hand side, as well as some uh, cutoff values you may be interested in. In this next tab, the item level tab, we have some item level statistics. Um, most importantly, the item level ECV, IECV, which was defined by Stuckey, Thyssen, and Edelin. And it's useful for if you have a large number of items and you want to make a short form that is very unidimensional. Stuckey and Edelin in 2015 say that items with IECV greater than 0 0.8 or 0 0.85 will typically yield a fairly unidimensional item set. And so if, if the IECV is greater than 0.8, it is highlighted yellow. And if it is greater than 0.85, it is highlighted in green. Here in the model level tab, we have uh, the PUC, which is the percentage of uncontaminated correlations, the ECV of the general factor, which is also available in the factor level uh, tab, and the average relative parameter bias, which compares the loadings on the, the general factor to the loadings of the unidimensional solution. And over here on the right, again, we have some guidelines for how to use those three different indices. And that would be using uh, this bifactor indices calculator for a standard bifactor model. We can also use it for more complicated things. In this next model, I have a general factor, uh, but this is from a survey in which it was administered both to uh, graduate students and to their advisor. So each one filled out nine items. And so we can model that using a, a, a bifactor type model in which uh, there's a self-evaluation method factor and an advisor evaluation method factor. Um, if there are also these other two specific factors which are called quantitative and qualitative. It doesn't matter what they are. The point is that each factor, each item, excuse me, loads not only on a general factor, but on several different specific factors. And as far as the bifactor indices are concerned, this is more or less not a problem. The factor level indices are all the same interpretation as before, and they work the same way. Uh, similarly for the item level, the IECVs are the proportion of common variance explained for each item by the general factor. And in the model level, the PUC uh, doesn't really work with these models on my calculator. Uh, you can compute a PUC for this model. It happens to be about 0.53. Uh, but my calculator will not do that. If there are cross-loading items, which means items on multiple specific factors, uh, PUC is unreliable. That warning is in the introduction as well. 
you can see that I don't have anything entered for the unidimensional factor loadings. In this case, I'm not interested in comparing a unidimensional solution to the general factor of the bifactor model. I, ha I haven't bothered including these at all. Everything works just fine, except there's no ARPB in the model level. Now, it's a good, this is a good time to mention that you'll see anywhere that a fact, an item doesn't load onto a factor, its loading is left blank. I could fill that in with zeros, and it would be perfectly fine. So you can leave it blank, you can fill it in with zeros, it won't change anything. The third model I want to show to you is this one, which is a two-tier model. There are two general factors, which typically are allowed to correlate with each other. And then the specific factors can include items on either one or both of the general factors. Of course, you can have more than two general factors. And in a model like this, the factor level indices will be all correct and will have the same interpretation for the most part as in the bifactor model, except that ECV, Stuckey, and Edelin uh, doesn't make any sense here. Just use the ECV new results. And also, the factor determinacy calculations will be incorrect because factor determinacy takes into account the latent variable correlation matrix, which I haven't had you input. So I can't take it into account. Uh, since there are multiple different um, general factors, the item level will be nonsensical. So don't look at that. And also in the model level, um, both none of these PUC, ECV, or ARPB will make any sense. So if you have a two-tier model, you can go ahead and use the bifactor indices calculator, but only pay attention to the factor level results. And finally, I sometimes uh, get people who will use this calculator in order to compute an omega for just a unidimensional solution, or maybe you have a three-factor solution. But even if I don't have specific factors, if I only have this one factor, the omega in the factor level uh, indices is just the omega of that um, of that general factor. So you can use this calculator to compute omegas even for non-bifactor models. Thank you for listening, and here again is a link to the bifactor indices calculator. Thanks.